The Harding family can be anything but dull. They're very energetic, dynamic, active. They're always moving. They are an incredible unit. I spent 28 years in the United States Navy, uh, first as a Navy corpsman, uh, returning to college, uh, where I got my degree in laboratory sciences, and then came back in as a Medical Service Corps officer. Being in a military family is um, a lot of teamwork. It's always a very fun household, everything that we're doing. You know, there's a lot of smiling and laughing and singing that goes on. Jackson shaped me into definitely a more caring person. He's shown me how to have patience and just to be a kinder person overall. I think as a family as well, he's shown us how to work as a team and be resilient. Um, and I think most of all, just have fun. So even when it's freezing cold outside, we'll still take him surfing and whatever brings him joy, um, that brings me joy. He's a boy and like all kids, um, they enjoy that kind of activity. He enjoys being thrown around and being wrestled with, but just laughing and enjoying it and wanting to go back in for more. Jackson was very well loved and cared for by the entire family, so um, he was treated like the little prince. You know, he was so good, and you know, that, that may have been a red flag for us, but we really didn't realize it at the time until I think his nine-month well baby check where you know, he started missing his milestones. We began the diagnosis of his developmental delays and through multiple appointments to specialists, they suspected that his pervasive developmental delays were related to a genetic disorder or mitochondrial insufficiencies, um, but they weren't really sure. So they gave him the diagnosis of PDD, NOS, pervasive developmental delays, not otherwise specified. When Jackson was about three years of age, he was diagnosed with autism. And then shortly after there, Jackson started presenting with seizures. We began to really clarify and was able to be more specific than uh, a PDD diagnosis. But I think when Jackson was born, he had a very traumatic birth experience. I remember the midwife just getting next to my side and she told me, you know, this is serious. Like, you need to push, like, give it, give it your all. And I was overdue with Jackson. So we knew he was um, a, a big baby. As Jackson was being delivered, the umbilical cord wrapped around his neck multiple times. And they immediately took him over. He didn't pink up right away. He wasn't vocal in any way, like I remembered with our other two children. And I saw them working feverishly on him. He was on the table, being stimulated. Time stood still, and it was going on for forever. He did start breathing and um, he pinked up. I, I think they continued to work him up. He had a fractured clavicle. We always wondered how that's impacted him in his, in his life's journey. In 2015, we were referred to a, a new neurologist that specialized in autism and she began to do some different workups. So we sent off genetic testing, kind of looking at what might be causing his multiple comorbidities. The results came back that he had 10 genetic abnormalities. So we did parental testing and it came back that we expressed nine of the 10 and the one that was not expressed was the Syngap one. Prior to that, it had been offered to us when he was much younger. But had we done that, Syngap one wouldn't have even come up. I can remember getting that phone call from Aaron in late December that something had come back and it was Syngap one. And it was a sense of relief, like we finally were able to put our finger on it. So immediately I, I went into action mode 
and I identified a document called Unique, and I began to read the Unique doc, and there was a paragraph that was written by a Syngap family about a little girl, Autumn, and I took that paragraph and I changed the gender from, you know, she to he and the name to Jackson, and I sent that to Monica, and, and I, I'm like, hey, here's, here is Jackson. Autumn and, and her mom, Rebecca, are the first really two that I really connected with. And I can remember first talking, our first conversations with another parent whose son was also diagnosed with Syngap-1. And for the first time, I felt that there was a connection. Someone else understood what we were going through. When we relocated back from the East Coast, we were introduced to a developmental pediatrician at the Naval Hospital. And at that point, I didn't really know a whole lot about autism, but the developmental pediatrician saw that he had the PDD NOS diagnosis and encouraged ABA therapy. Our days were still very packed with therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy, physical therapy, ABA therapy. Therapy has really encompassed our world with Jackson. We also realized that ABA therapy needed to be completely and fully customized to Jackson. We went through many companies, many BCBAs, and finally found the one that was determined to help Jackson and to help us. As a result of working with Jackson, I've had to change my practice entirely. I've changed my entire approach and I've restructured the way I deliver my service. I've had to shift my perspective from what I was taught in school and in training as a behavior analyst to a perspective that is fundamentally based on the idea that we need to create connection before we treat. ABA really works best when everyone is involved and we achieve consistency in what I, as a provider, I'm teaching Jackson and so that the family can implement. I cannot emphasize enough how important it is for everyone to be involved. ABA therapy has not only been beneficial for Jackson, but for our entire family. We each have to adapt to how we interact with Jackson. We have to be able to assess his environment. We need to be able to read his body language and how he's reacting to the stimuli within his environment to know how we might be able to redirect and influence in order to keep behaviors from maybe escalating or to keep him happy. As Jackson has gotten older, the main seizure that has always been the scariest are the drop attacks. Jackson can look at grades of grass. He can look at bushes. He can look at a pattern on someone's shirt and he will seize. Again, it was really difficult to get medication into Jackson. Um, and so they recommended a uh, vagus nerve stimulator, a VNS. And, and so we went through the consults of, with a surgeon on our implantation of a, a VNS uh, that would potentially help control his uh, his seizures. We then sought a second opinion because we thought how invasive this surgery would be. We wanted to make sure that we had it right. There was uh, a friend of ours that um, spoke to Monica about someone that they knew that was using um, cannabidiol, medical marijuana, to help with, with seizures. After I was introduced to this mom, she introduced me to a larger group of moms who had exhausted their resources as far as anti-epileptic medications, and they were seeing great results with medical marijuana. And so th that made me very curious and immediately uh, started doing uh, a ton of research on, you know, medical marijuana and, uh, and, and seizures. Eventually, as we matured and grew on learning about um, cannabis for, for seizures, we were uh, introduced to uh, a gentleman, Jason David, who um, 
who is son who has uh, Dravet syndrome and was one of the first, if not the first, um, to help his son with uh, cannabis to control seizures. And so uh, he became an amazing resource to us, helping us how to use Jaden's juice to help control seizures for Jackson. We had to be transparent with our doctors. If Jackson has a blood test, he's going to have marijuana in his system. But it is now to the point where our doctors have said, guys, this is what works for you. For the first time in many years, we had established complete seizure control by the use of a pharmaceutical in addition to using Jaden's juice. Behaviors have always been a major part of our life with Jackson. He has always demonstrated a ton of aggressive behaviors, whether they have been self-injurious behaviors, property destruction, or aggression towards others. And for the first time, I was realizing that it wasn't so much that we were doing or what we were not doing, but what truly was happening inside of his body. So I had um, reached out to a friend of mine who has had very challenging situations with their children and a family that we very much can relate with, and they recommended a therapist. Part of what the Harding family has amazingly mastered is the what part of the process. Um, what is indicated? What does the schedule look like? What providers do we need to have in play? Part of the process is the importance of figuring out the what, what is indicated, incredibly important part of the process, but also the how. How are we going to stay connected? How are we going to ride this out as individuals, as a family, and embrace every component of this process? Family therapy specifically addresses the how part of the process, which is how do I and how do we as a family ride out this for the long haul. How are we going to manage the ups and downs that are bound to happen in this journey? You know, being at that low point really gave us an opportunity to bring somebody into our lives that really could help us see our family and help give us guidance and direction to how to heal and manage with our challenges. The Harding family, they are a well-oiled machine. They are constantly in service to family, constantly in service to community. And even with all of those amazing attributes being said, this is a family that has deeper, vulnerable parts to them. This is a family that grieves. Um, this is a family that still, despite all of the years, um, gets scared, that worries about the future, and that has to prioritize creating time for connection. The best part about working with Jackson is 100% without a doubt him. His love, his um, authenticity, his personality, watching him and his family grow and overcome their challenges, that has been the most rewarding thing about working with Jackson. Since Jackson and I have this special bond, it allows me to help him and just care for him. Advice that I would give Syngap siblings is not to be afraid of your situation. Um, share it with the people who are around you and all of your friends. I found that a lot of my friends have been really supportive and have only just wanted to learn if that's not a situation that they're familiar with. Again, connecting is everything, and we really want to be able to support each other and make the quality of life for our, the children better as well as for the families.